after finally sitting down and reading Kagurabachi, I have to get this off of my chest immediately. This manga is a masterpiece. Really, it's not too far-fetched to say this is one of the best new mangas that came out in decades. I'm talking about better than Jujutsu Kaisen and the rest of them. Can you really doubt any manga with a main character wearing a trench coat and wielding a katana? You'd be out of your mind. This might just be one of my top five favorite mangas ever. If not, the best shonen that has come out in recent memory. And all it takes is one masterful chapter created by the author that is enough to sway me into believing that this is one of the best mangas ever made. After all, it already has an anime. Kagurabachi is already generation defining and it's currently changing our culture as we know it. Which just goes to show its true qualities. Are you hype? I'm hype. It was definitely one of the best mangas I've read. Up there with Hunter x Hunter and Berserk. The series itself has a really nice, new, and sleek, fresh looking art style, making every single page just come out and jump at your face. Don't let me get started on those two page spreads. Oh my god. Kagurabachi has a really bright future, and I just cannot wait for all of us to finally see the potential that it has to show, and for the author to finally take his honored place as one of the greats in the manga industry. Better than Jeja Akutami, Yoshiro Tagashi, Kentaro Miura, and most importantly, Akira Toriyama. Kagurabachi is more iconic than Super Saiyan and Gear 5 combined. All right, all right, let's get down to the nitty gritty and stop memeing for a second. Now, is Kagurabachi actually a good manga and what are my first impressions on it? Well, if you really wanna ask me, at first glance, it looks pretty average. Now, after reading it, what can I really say? Well, we have an entire plot line about blacksmiths, which I think is actually really cool because blacksmiths aren't really touched upon in manga, let alone you will never find any blacksmith being a main character. So I really like that aspect of the story. But then there's one thing that really bothers me, and that was the involvement with sorcerers and magic and the constant trend that manga currently has. Rather than trying to find something unique and be its own thing, the Kagurabachi unfortunately ends up following the trends of the anime industry right now. Not that that's a bad thing, but hey, it's all about the execution. Maybe one guy can write a story about sorcery better than the next. But I will say it is disappointing because when it comes to a new manga, I want a 100% fresh experience or at least something that's going to blow me away. And Kagurabachi didn't really do that. And you could say I'm being a little bit harsh on it because there are only two chapters out right now, but you see all the people hype beasting it, it's only natural that some people are gonna feel the opposite way. God forbid I criticize a manga for having only two chapters when everyone else is hype beasting it for only have two chapters. Anyway, the manga itself is actually really standard so far, but there are a few things that caught my attention. The main point of appeal being that the manga itself leaves me with a lot of questions. I want to see what this war that continues to be mentioned in the story is. With it being the Seite War. The Seite War is something that is very special because our protagonist's father, being a blacksmith, would make six different weapons that would end up being used in the war. And he'd be considered a famous person for making these weapons. And they would say that he saved many lives because these weapons would be one of the stopping forces for the war. The main character's father saved a lot of people due to his weapons. However, there's an interesting tie in morality with all of this because these same weapons that were used to save people were also used to kill people. This is one aspect in the story that I want to be touched upon a lot. I want to see a lot of moral consequences and choices that will ultimately make this story a lot more interesting. Because I don't know about you guys, guy in a trench coat with a sword killing people can only go but so far and be only so interesting. I'm sorry to say, but a lot of people who are seasoned when it comes to the entertainment industry are gonna recognize this kind of design on a character and it's just going to feel a little too close to home and it's gonna make you want something a little bit more groundbreaking. Yes, the main character does look cool, he does look awesome, but, I mean, 
a trench coat and a sword i've seen it too many times it's not really winning me over one thing interesting about the character design is the very weapon itself and how it has the meaning and the association of the fish when it comes to whenever the main character uses his weapon with the black fish being a meaning to ward off evil and the three colored one meaning determination and fatherly strength whenever he uses an ability of a fish the fish's color ends up coating his sword giving each and every sword slice a distinctive meaning it speaks to the main character's intentions and it honestly makes fights and combat situations all the more interesting when Chihiro's sword is black you know he's trying to expel any evil and it just lets you know how much he despises anyone that he's going to cut down and how much he justifies himself for murdering them because in his eyes he would follow a righteous path of justice yet he's practically a murderer which is still an interesting plot point there's even more because when his sword becomes three different colors symbolizing the same fishes that he's using as an ability when using the three colored fish his power would come from his fatherly love and determination letting us know that chihiro swings his sword for his father and for the sake of justice and destroying evil which are the same teachings his father gave to him it's nice to know that he's so adamant about his father that he's going to continue to swing his sword for that very purpose in moments in a fight we'll know that he's thinking about his father when the three colored fish is out and when the black colored fish is out we will know that he wants to destroy any evil that bit of symbolism in only a few chapters was something that i found to be really interesting but i will say it still just happens to fall short. I find the very fact that the three colored fish is a symbol of the main character's father, and it just goes to show how much love and respect he has for his father, but I can't really care about his father as a reader because he dies so suddenly, and I can't really get to know him as a character or understand, let alone really care about the main character's convictions and fuel for revenge and to top it off with this being another revenge story it doesn't really help this manga's case at all because for the love of god how many of those have we seen already coming off of demon slayer when we have a main character going out for revenge to kill the people that killed his family yet he's also wielding a katana with this main character also wielding a katana and trying to avenge his family that was killed very suddenly as well also with this manga having connections to sorcery just like a lot of other trending mangas i'm just seeing a lot of demon slayer and jujutsu kaisen in this one it's not really making any strong impressions in the slightest even with so many memes of this series getting thrown in my face it's still pretty forgettable but in comparison to demon slayer and in comparison to Jujutsu Kaisen, what does Kagurabachi do on its own? Well, it has a strong reliance and it has a strong narrative surrounding the basis and the weight that a katana can really carry. That's one thing we didn't really get out of Demon Slayer. They didn't really stress the message behind how much their own weapons are worth. Demon Slayer kind of just felt like Demon of the Week. We good guys, we fight demons. We work hard, we win! I think Kagurabachi might be able to separate itself with what the writing can possibly do with its ideas on morals and weapons being used to protect people although they're still killing people. Which would be a nice refreshing spin compared to something like Demon Slayer. But it just really doesn't help when both of these stories still have very abrupt deaths on family members that don't really get much attention or development so it really makes it hard to care about both protagonists and their goals and with such familiarity it's hard enough as it is to try and give Kagurabachi a fair chance not to mention the sorcery trend everyone just has to fight demons and use magic in every manga now with that being said the only thing that's left for Kagurabachi to stand on its own two feet is its execution and that's few and far between because if the premise isn't all that interesting it's going to be hard for this manga to keep anybody's attention at least if you're a seasoned reader i'm not trying to put too crazy of expectations on this manga because to be honest i don't really have any expectations 
at all, regardless of the memes and the hype beast. But as I say this with the death of the main character's father and the pretty shallow use of the main character's powers, I can't say I'm a big fan of the execution right now. The only real interesting takeaways I get from this manga are what are these demon weapons? How are they made? What's the special method for making them? Who has these weapons and why? And what impact does the war have on our main character's life up until now? Unfortunately, it's pretty difficult to try and find the motivation to figure out all these answers to the questions the manga leaves us with because it just feels average. If a manga has to rely on execution above anything else, that's a pretty bad spot for a manga to be in because how is it going to keep attention from its readers when the readers will probably just go read another manga that's just doing sorcery and magic while having the proper execution and just ultimately being better. For example, we would have another new manga right out of Shonen Jump and this would be a manga that also is trying to ride on trends, with it being Diasporazer. Now why would I be mentioning Diasporazer in a video about Kagurabachi? Well you see, the answer is actually really simple, because unlike Kagurabachi, Diasporazer ends up following the trope, following the trend of using sorcery and demons, yet it takes it and does it in its own unique way, unlike Kagurabachi. You see in Diasporazer, this is a story about a bunch of country hicks using demonic powers and sorcery, leaving the main character and anyone else in Diasporazer to use their sorcery in order to take the forms of extraterrestrials and aliens because their source of magic would end up coming from outer space, which unlike Kagurabachi and even Jujutsu Kaisen, magic aliens would be a nice and fresh new take on the sorcery trope. Diasporazer, unlike Kagurabachi, would have an interesting premise that would separate itself from other trend riding manga out at the moment. Kagurabachi would be a story about a blacksmith with a katana hunting down evil sorcerers while Diasporazer would be about a bunch of country hicks coming together using sorcery and calling upon the power of aliens to kill their enemies. I'm sorry to tell you, but a guy using magic to turn into an alien is way more interesting than a guy killing a bunch of Yakuza members with a demon sword. And I don't think anyone has to even think twice about it. So I have to say I'm really extremely disappointed in Kagurabachi, even if there are only two chapters out right now. Diasporazer would have the same amount of chapters, yet Kagurabachi would be the manga that is getting all of the limelight simply because of a bunch of memes and hype beasting. To be honest, I'm not only disappointed in Kagurabachi, but I'm also disappointed in the wide array of fans that it has simply because it's coming to a point where you can't really even tell if people actually genuinely care about the series or if they're just making fun of it the entire time because the author of Kagurabachi actually deserves some genuine criticism and honesty about his series. And throwing a manga success simply for a meme is just something that will end up destroying the industry because where a manga like Kagurabachi is actually getting all the attention and the hype behind it, a manga like Diasporazer that is actually doing something new, that actually has an interesting premise and is taking a trope and doing it in a way that we've never seen before, that just ends up getting put to the side simply so that a joke can take all the attention. And this allows mediocrity to become filler and take away the spot of another manga that truly could be a nice change of pace unlike anything that we've ever seen before. Just so a bunch of losers can have a laugh about it on the internet. What's up guys, it's BG Sean, the other guy that runs this channel, and I actually have some things to say about Kagurabachi too. Obviously, if you genuinely like this manga, there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, there are some mid-mangas that I like as well, even some trash ones. But more or less, I guess you could say my issue isn't with this series, but how people are giving it unnatural growth through memes. Rather than people genuinely liking the series or genuinely enjoying it, the reason why this series is the talk of the town is simply because of a joke. And you know, that's all fine and dandy until you start to put things into perspective. For example, what if Kagurabachi gets so many sales and it wasn't because of how good the writing was, but simply because of the notoriety it has. Nobody's going to look at other mangas 
that potentially have both better art and a better story than Kagurabachi because Kagurabachi would simply hog all of that exposure off of a facade. To put it simply, this manga could potentially not get canceled because of its popularity through means and not because of the popularity of the actual story because people are overly hyping it up for the sake of a joke. People are creating fake reception on a series and giving it fake growth rather than letting the mangaka actually make a genuine story that we could all enjoy. It just sucks because no matter what perspective I try to look at this from, this only looks like a bad thing. Because off of two chapters, since everybody is overhyping it, any newcomer that heard about this series is going to come into it having extremely unrealistic expectations, despite this being the author's first time making a real manga outside of one-shots. Even then, off of two chapters alone, that is an insane claim to make about any series. Giving anything this form of artificial popularity allows it to cheat the algorithm. This manga is cheating the Shonen Jump popularity algorithm rather than genuinely earning it through any real merits it may have. And the fact that you guys overhype Kagurabachi so soon, since you're giving the author a freebie, we'll never be able to see what he is truly capable of doing. What I mean by this, since there are absolutely no stakes in terms of the popularity of the series, we'll never be able to see what type of work the mangaka is actually capable of putting in and bringing to the table. If there is the threat that you could get relegated, the threat that you could get removed from Jump, if you're not on your A game, you will play or work harder than ever potentially reaching new heights as a writer and artist by giving anybody a freebie that gives them the chance to become complacent, giving them no driving factor to reach new heights or see what they're truly capable of making. When you overhype a manga, not only do you hurt the potential fan base that it could have, but you also hurt the type of writing that we could have been getting from the mangaka that could have potentially helped the series reach newer heights allowing it to have a more natural life cycle but now since everything is a joke and you can't tell whether or not this series is genuinely entertaining due to the word of mouth being that the series is good but uh oh we're just joking and having fun that is this good this is how you ruin the industry it's like in your school cafeteria you could have chocolate ice cream or strawberry ice cream we all know everyone in the school wants chocolate ice cream now, an individual and his group of friends, they see the strawberry ice cream, they get a taste of it. Let's say they overhype it and then they say this strawberry isn't just a regular strawberry, it's a strawberry cheesecake. They make this a running gag because it's so fucking funny that strawberry ice cream tastes like strawberry cheesecake. Now, everybody, including some people that would normally eat chocolate ice cream, will now vote for the strawberry ice cream because they were told it would taste like strawberry cheesecake. But once they take a bite of this strawberry ice cream, unfortunately, the moment they take a bite, it cements a permanent vote on strawberry ice cream because it is popularity based. Just because you tried it, the principal at the school is going to think that it is popular and might discontinue that chocolate that you originally wanted all because you went out there and gave something a view based off of the lies somebody told you. But hey, I guess it's just a fun joke, huh? Honestly, I would think those guys that lied to me about the strawberry ice cream for a joke would be assholes because I really wanted that strawberry cheesecake ice cream. And the real strawberry cheesecake that they could have ordered that was in the background the entire time has the potential of being gone forever. Finally, a new flavor. Look at this art. Look at everything it's bringing to the table. But how many people do you even think know that this manga exists because the talk of the town has been given to the theatrics of the village idiot? All in all, I wish the memes and all the dumb shit on the internet wouldn't be able to affect the industry in the way that it does. Because not only does it just allow a place for mediocrity, which I've said before, but it creates numerous misconceptions on the quality of many series and if certain series aren't really up to standards or quality yet they're being put on a pedestal this will set a new standard for all the mangas that we end up having 
and allow authors to think that it's acceptable to just simply copy current trends and not do anything innovative because they're going to think that this is what readers want. Unfortunately, at the end of the day, Kagurabachi just ends up being very, very subpar, and it gives a fake illusion of quality due to all of the hype beast and the memes surrounding it, and it's kind of sad because the manga doesn't really deserve to be treated as a joke, and to be honest, and depending on who you ask, it doesn't really deserve any kind of success either. With that being said, hopefully moving forward, this series does end up carrying its own weight, instead of having its own weight carried by cringe meme publicity.